Peter James is a UK number one best-selling author renowned for his crime and thriller novels, notably the Detective Superintendent Roy Grace series. He's unveiling the latest instalment in the gripping series, Stop Them Dead, shining a chilling light on the sinister underbelly of the illegal dog trade. And Peter is with us here. How are you today? I'm really good, Toby. Thank you. Now, what was the inspiration behind your latest novel, Stop Them Dead? And how did you sort of come across this premise of organised crime gangs in the illegal dog trade? Let me start by giving a reassurance to everybody who's listening who loves dogs, because I'm a massive dog lover, as is my wife. I have not depicted in Stop Them Dead any description at all of any dog being harmed. Um, so rest assured, you won't be upset by reading it. I've, I've depicted plenty of nasty people being harmed, but, yes. but, but not dogs. Uh, I couldn't do that. The premise of Stop Them Dead, it all began when I, when I, about two and a half years ago, I read a piece in the local Brighton paper, The Argus, about a woman who'd been walking a dog in a, in a city park, a Springer Spaniel, and she'd been mugged and the dog was stolen. And then I read further on and I was astonished. It said the dog, a, a breeding bitch, was worth £5,000. What? <laughs> and then I thought, you know, if you're mugged, that's that's horrible enough. Um, but, you know, if you, if you had your handbag or a wallet or watch stolen, at least you've probably got some insurance cover. You, you'd get over it. If you've got a dog that is part of the heart and soul of you and your beloved ones and the family, you would be more than gutted because you, you'd be worrying, where's that dog gone? What bastards have got it? How are they treating it? Um, and I had a meeting with the chief constable of Sussex about a week later, where I had a kind of occasional catch up just on what's what's going on in crime in the county, where, in Roy Grace's county. And I said, what was all that about? And she said, that is the tip of the iceberg. She said, the price of dogs, and start, it started at the beginning of lockdown. Everybody wanted a lockdown dog. And the price of dogs went up 10 times. And organized crime gangs around the whole UK, not just Sussex, but everywhere in the UK, realized they could make more money out of dogs than drugs. Wow. And uh, and if you, if you you know, if you're dealing drugs, you're looking at five to fifteen years. The, the maximum sentences for dog crimes was six months. And what happened was they they started not just people being mugged in parks and out in the countryside and their dogs stolen, but illegally importing dogs from mostly Eastern Europe, particularly Romania, where there's a really high incidence of rabies. And we've not had that in England for over 100 years. Illegally farming, puppy farms just ex exploded all over all over the country. And where the dogs are, were being bred in, in really horrible conditions, but then sold very cleverly. Um, and I, I'm a patron of the RSPCA, and I, they were so brilliant, really helpful to me in terms of how the trade works. And, and they, they're using Stop Them Dead themselves to, show, to really show people how to avoid actually buying an illegal, illegally farmed or illegally imported or stolen dog. Um, and the villains, the villains use all kinds of clever, clever trades. Um, I've got, I mean, the story of Stop Dead is, it's, it's, it, it starts as a murder story. A farmer wakes up in the middle of the night, and hears intruders and they're trying to steal um, a litter of puppies he has in a barn. Uh, and he goes out to try to stop them with tragic consequences. And that's how Roy Grace gets involved in the beginning. And for the book, were any of the characters in the book based on people that you know in real life? Always. I mean, Roy Grace is, is of course, based on a, a real-life detective, Dave Gaylor, who I first met back in 1997. And he's worked with me very closely on, on every Roy Grace novel, You're reading every hundred pictures. Because for me, authenticity is really important. Um, I've got a, a particularly nasty villain that I'm very proud of. <laughs> I love creating really horrible villains. And I got a particularly horrible one. And this is a guy I came across um, in, in a prison. And I just thought, oh, yes, you are <laughs> so, so horrible. Yeah, I, 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 you have to be a character in my next book. <laughs> and there's been some research that's found that women, if they were to create a villain that would be based on an ex-partner, and men would go for their boss. Do you have any tips on how to fictionalise these people without them recognising themselves? Yeah, I, it, it's a great question, that, because... Um, 
over the years, any, anybody who's ever annoyed me or pissed me off, I, I tend to put them in books. Either as, <laughs> I put the old headmaster of my prep school as, as a little <laughs> guzzy old alcoholic <laughs> grabs. Um, and I have put, and I always, I always put anyone, anyone who really annoys me, I put their name on toe tags in mortuaries. <laughs> um, and I have a lot of fun with it. But in terms of, I think that I, I always tend to disguise people a little bit. So what I'll do is um, I'll take every character I ever write, I base on somebody that I have met or, or seen, because I find it impossible to actually just create a character out of thin air. I always like to know how they move, how they talk, how they laugh. Um, so I always have a role model, um, but I'll so I'll often take somebody um, and, and then make them into a villain or or, or whatever. Um, I I mean I think the character is the most important thing, and and I think one important thing with villains generally, uh, with with a few exceptions, and there's one exception of this guy in this book, but it is to make I always say love you should love all your characters. And, and, and I think the most endearing villains are the ones we actually like, you know, as an example, say Hannibal Lecter and, and Silence of the Lambs. The guy's a monster, but we actually root for him. Uh, and, and, and the same with kind of Dracula in a way, you know, we, if you go back to, you know, he's, he's a monster, but actually we think he's quite sort of, he's quite cool. That's true. You can create a, a, a villain that actually people have some empathy with, You, you then you, you really got your reader. And for the other side, I suppose, for the detective, what traits do you think makes the ultimate fictional detective well I, I always joke that if i was unlucky enough to have a member of my family murdered roy grace is the detective i'd want <laughs> working on the case so i guess for me it makes him the ultimate detective um but i think that what what makes a really good detective when i first met dave gaylor who became my role model for roy grace Back in 1997, just I'll give you a little bit of the background because I think it's really helpful in answering your question. Um, it was in 1997, and I, I was somebody said to me, I think you might find this guy interesting. And I went into this office at Brighton Police Station, and he was a young detective inspector. And I've never seen an office so untidy. Every inch of the floor was covered in blue and green plastic crates bulging with manila folders. And, and I could just see his balding head sticking out at the back. And I said, are you moving? And he said, no. He said, um, I am a homicide detective, but I've just been tasked with reopening all the unsolved murders in the county of Sussex, where there is still somebody alive who could benefit from the investigation, you know, a loved one, a relative, or where there is still a chance of catching the offender. And so each one of these cases is the principal case file of an unsolved murder. I am the last chance each victim has for justice and that the family has for closure. And I love that sort of human image about him. That just, yeah. of course, is a real caring person. And as I got to know him, I realized that he had, he had, I think, three, three characteristics that, that are quite rare to find in the same person. And it's these three characteristics, in my view, that make the perfect detective. And the first is that you have to, you have to be very anal because very methodical because every major crime, every murder is a huge puzzle with hundreds, sometimes thousands of pieces you have to painstakingly fit together. But secondly, you have to be really creative because a lot of major crimes are ultimately solved by blue sky creative thinking. But thirdly, and, and equally importantly, is that it's that bonding with the victim's family. Um, so much of what a detective gets out in terms of evidence ultimately comes from the, the relatives, the close ones, the loved ones of the victim who's been murdered. And so empathy is, is a massive part of, of, of what it takes to be a really good detective. So do you think you'd maybe be a good detective then? Because I suppose you've got to have all three to be an author as well, especially when it's detective novels. Absolutely. I do sometimes. It's... um. Think, yeah, I could, I could, I could add to this. Um, I'm, I'm probably not quite as detailed enough. And yeah. the, I guess the other element you have to be as a good detective is. 
both tough and you have to be brave. I'm not sure I'm brave enough. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not sure I'd, I'd, I'd want to have to try and take down some six foot eight gorilla oh. that had a machete in his hand. And, and you know, at some point in their career, almost every cop I've ever met has their life on the line. Uh, yeah, and they're confronted down a dark alley with with somebody with a gun or a machete, uh, and they have to make kind of decisions that, that, that could go either way. What do you think is behind the huge success of the Roy Grace series, both in terms of the books and the fact that it's been made into a TV series as well now? I honestly think that it's two things. I think one is people really like the character of Roy Grace and 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 his supporting characters I've kind of created in the books, Glenn Branson, uh, politically incorrect Norman Potty. Yes. <laughs> Roy Grace's new wife, Cleo. I think character is, is the most important thing when we read. And I think people really... Like her, they think they find Roy Grace a warm. I get, I get, a doesn't happen once. This has happened like probably every three or four weeks. We'll get a fan email from somewhere in the world saying, Roy Grace is the only fictional detective I've ever wanted to sleep with. <laughs> <laughs> I take that as a great compliment. Yeah. But also, I think I try always to, my criteria for writing a new, a new Roy Grace novel is, or, or any novel, but we're talking about Roy Grace, is I can spend a year of my life writing that book so I'm, I'm not thinking what's going to sell i'm thinking what do i want to spend a year of my life learning about and what do i want to spend a year of my life being passionate about and writing about so with every, every roy grace book so far has been different you know stop, stop, I, I take a different topic and quite often the, a topic that gives out a kind of public message and subliminally you know i wrote about the uh, the request of sussex police uh, when i wrote my novel dead at first sight uh, about the hor- horrors of internet romance fraud and so many people in the uk and elsewhere being conned out of their life savings by people they've met online who would think they think it's going to be the love of their life um yeah and we stop them dead i've tried to really, you know, we are a nation of dog lovers. I've tried to show people just how to avoid uh, getting buying a dog that's been reared in a puppy farm or stolen or illegally imported. You know, much better get a rescue dog or get get a dog that's been properly looked after and properly brought up. And this is the nineteenth book in the Roy Grace series. So, will you ever run out of ideas? I hope not. I recently signed a new five book contract. <laughs> oh wow! And I'm. Doing, I'm also doing one to two spin-offs. Um, Roy Grace is Miss Wife Sandy. You know, he first when we first meet Roy Grace in um, Dead Simple, we discovered his wife Sandy, who he loved and adored, had vanished years earlier on his 30th birthday. And for years he wasn't able to move on, wondering what happened to her, trying to find her. You know, did she run off with a lover? Did she get murdered, kidnapped, whatever? And I and then he does sort of finally move on. Eventually he has her declared legally dead, and then things progress from there. Well, I've got at the back of Stop Them Dead are the first seven chapters of a book that is coming out next May, and it is called They Thought I Was Dead, uh-huh. Sandy's Story. And what's behind the decision for every book title to have the word dead in it? It started as a kind of, when I wrote my very early books, I had one word titles, I had Possession, Dream, Alchemist. And the problem is there's no copyright in the title. And other, I found other books coming out with the same title. There was Alchemist. There was Twilight, of course. And I, when I, I, I was writing the first Roy Grace, the title Dead Simple just popped in my head. And I thought, you know, that's never been used before. So if, if another book comes out with Dead Simple, you know, they've clearly copied my title. Yeah. And, and then when I was writing it and I was thinking about the next book, um, the title just made me smile, Looking Good Dead. Yeah. And, I, and I ran that by my publishers and they said, this is going to be the Dead series. And I said, why not? (laughs) As well as books that are coming up, what can we expect from Grace in terms of the TV show? Will there be more? And will there be more cameos? Yes. They've just finished season four. and There's four more episodes. uh, And I've I've got very brief appearances in a couple of those. And they're 
the broadcasting probably um, late Jan, February, and they'll be filming again next year, which is great news. So that's that's going. I'm having to write the books faster to keep ahead of them now. <laughs> <laughs> I've also got, um, I had a short story collection, A Twist of the Knife, which originally came out a few years ago, and I've updated that. And, I, and, and we've put in two, it's coming out as a paperback in November for Christmas. I've got two short stories in that, very briefly. One I've co-written with Ian Rankin, and his detective Rebus and Roy Grace working together on a cold case in Brighton, uh, set back in the mods and rockers eras. And I've also co-written a story that's in the volume with Val McDermott about Roy Grace working with her profiler and her detective. That's quite good. They'll all meet up. Yeah. Well, this book is, of course, called Stop Them Dead. So if we want to get our hands on it, where can we order it? Stop Them Dead is available from you can, on Amazon. You can pre-order it and um, Kindle and audio. Um, it's also available pretty much every bookshop, hopefully in the in the country. Do you know if you want to support your local bookstore, you can certainly order, order it from them, uh, and, and it'll be in all all the supermarkets and Waterstones, of course, too. Stop Them Dead is uh, the nineteenth of Roy Gray series. You can read the series in any order. So if you've never read a Roy Gray before. Um, you can start with, with Stop Them Dead. Um, but you get a little bit more out if you go through this, the whole series in sequence, but you can go back. And I've worked very closely with the RSPCA on this book. And one one of the things that we have done is try to put, not they're not sort of big didactic messages, but we've put them, clue, little tips in how that you if you read the book, you'll learn how to avoid buying a stolen dog or an illegally puppy farm dog or or um, a legally imported dog. There's some there's some real tricks of the trade that some that the uh, the illegal puppy trade use. Um, one of them, and it, and, I, and, I, and it's in, it features in the book as part of part of the, the story. One of the storylines is you you want to, you want to buy a puppy, and, and they're very clever. The, the the illegal operators they advertise on all the usual sites like Gumtree and Pets for Home. And let, let's say you're looking for a puppy, and you see this adorable golden doodle on 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 one, on, on one of these sites, and, and you have got a kid, and the kid goes, "Oh, that's the puppy I'd like. That's the puppy I'd like." So you you make an appointment, and you go down and see it, and it's only three four weeks old, and you arrive, and wow, it's a beautiful house, beautiful garden, wonderfully kept, and you think, "Oh, these must be really caring people," and you go in, and you're really focused on the dog, so focused on the dog, you don't actually look around. And you don't notice some of the clues. You don't notice that there are no photos, no family photos anywhere in this beautiful house. That's a bit odd. And you also don't notice the dog's mum, mother isn't around. And the couple who are kind of selling the, the puppies, you know, they're charming and they say, and what you should do if you're buying a puppy is you go see it at three or four weeks. If you like it, you put a deposit, then you come back eight, ten weeks after it's had all its injections and you take it with you. But they'll say, oh, we've actually got ten people wanting this dog. So if, if you want it, you better buy it and take it today. And, you know, three thousand pounds cash. So you get sort of pressurized. You buy it, take it home. A week later, it'll probably get sick. You phone them up. They're gone. You find out it's an Airbnb. which They've literally just rented to sell this, this, this bunch of dogs that they've either stolen or imported illegally or bred. And that goes on a lot. Wow. Well, many thanks for joining us today. It's been great to have you here. Thank you so much. It's great, great talking to you.